my other a moving story. My little ordinary life lived in a solid cannot in an occupied of town and had few complaints. Friends often visited Marino like coffee and snumbo. They got up to they got up they got up to all kinds of fun. Come on, talk it. Hey! Let's go over there. Last once I was an egg. In the good old summertime. In the good old summer last time. And when they couldn't get together they and and when they couldn't get together they used other ways to keep in touch. Give my regards to Broadway. Remember me to Herald Square. Tell the gang at forty second street. Forty second street. That I will soon be there. Every other day, man worked as a messenger. He knew some very good shortcuts. He knew some. He knew some. He knew some very good shortcuts. Sometimes his job even took him across town. Now, one night, man had a, man, one night, man had a dream. He dreamed he was. In a little boat being tossed about an strange stormy storm, stormy sea, stormy sea. Ah! He didn't work. He didn't sleep. But he didn't. He didn't sleep well at all. Grumph. The next morning, Miner felt cranky and unsettled. Told, not even his cup of tea soothed him. Snumbo dropped by. Myla liked some Snumbo. He'd known him since they were pups. They were pups, but Snumbo had been writing some really lofty poetry and was going on and on, on about it. Beyond audience, Ezo, Ezo, I hear that. Distant, distant, strains and pine for tea or pine. Shall, shall I ever more? Shall I ever more? I try not to become air, air Irri irritated. But then it was like he had full ends in his head. He almost felt good as he yelled things, things at some, things at number. And another thing, why can, why can't you just? So not long after Snumber had slunk away, Miner felt really bad. Miner said they would only get more, more out of Kilter and let Breeze no more than uh, the picked up. Mid afternoon, a large river of moths floated by. Man had never seen such a thing. A paper bag sailed over his kennel, followed by a blue balloon. A man scurried by, chasing his hat. Then a, then a scarecrow flew past. A breeze, breeze had become a wind, which grew stronger by the minute. Bump. And it was blowing a gale. A gale. Right. It was a bumpy ride. A wild ruckus of wind and noise raised around Maya's kennel. Huddled, me, huddled inside, Maya fell in and out of a over foot for sleep. He dreamed again that he was in a small boat on a stormy sea. All this time, whenever he awoke, he awoke, he awoke, he felt seasick. Finally, the long, the long night was over, and with its passing came a peaceful dawn. 
but something didn't feel right to Milo. For starters, his kennel seemed to be less listening to pot and smoke out and had wandered inside. Wandered inside. Wandered inside. Shooing the crowd out. My had made an important discovery. His kennel had moved during the night. How quickly Milo's life his had changed? <laughs> he remembered his argument with Slumber Hand and Side. Then he remembered the moths, the scarecrow, and the bumpy night. As the hours passed, Ina pondered his plight or just howled softly to himself. Then, as luck would have it, Maya had a visitor, a migrating bird, stopped by on his way to Tyra the Bugle. It had already travelled a long way, mixing flying with walking, with walking, hence the comfy sneakers, and that, and that, and that, chosen this out of the way, spot for the rest. By acting as a counterweight, the bird, whose name was Carlos, helped my to save her ground. Carlos was a mostly unremarkable bird, so he did have a few display feathers he could show if he needed to impress anyone. That's also unusually, unusually, unusual. Unusual. Unusual for migra migra migratory best to walk parts of the journey. But as Carlos often said, often said, I like walking. You see so much more when you go by foot. High above the glittering metropolis. Carlos and the miner spent the night swapping stories, songs, ideas, when the Release realized it was a big wide road out there. Come on in, a window cleaner shut up for a day's work. He made an offer if Maya helped wash windows. Windows, he'd take his kennel to the ground. I agreed, Carlos agreed to just for the fun of it. He said he liked to have different experience on his travels. Once on the ground, they farewelled the window cleaner. Then they fashioned a trolley so they could tow the kennel back to where it belonged. In the meantime, Maya's friends and friends had gathered right around the spot where his kennel had been. It was number they feared the worst. It was relief all around when Maya appeared, tying his kennel behind him. In a Coits, and they could hardly believe Maya's strange tale of peril. 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 Peril and survival on the roof of the city itself. With everything, with everything back in its rightful place, a celebration was in order. It was a happy, a happy. Occasion to so Maya noticed Slumber was still up a sniffing. Maya was wished with all his hat that he could take his words back. He said sorry to Slumber as he spoke. Slumber looked, looked sad. Perhaps even a little angry, but not so sad. That night, Maya dreamed that he was in a little boat again, but the sea was calm and land was in sight. Maya slept long and well, and woke feeling much more like us, like his usual self. Isn't life a mystery? He thought. Two days later, he had a puzzle to deliver. On his way out, he noticed something on his on his doorstep. It was a bunch collection of numbers. Poetry and the biscuit. 